My dearest Maria, I received a letter from Eberhardt last week. His happiness with Renate is a source of great joy to me. I look forward to the time when we will be together as they are. It grieves me to think of the sorrow I have caused you, yet I am convinced that this is God's work, the way we found each other with time so short before my imprisonment. Every day I am overcome with how undeservedly I received this happiness and each day I am moved at what a hard school God has led you through during this year. And now it appears to be God's will that I should bring you even more suffering. <clears throat> Yet when I think of this world, of this present darkness, I am overcome by the gift of grace and light which our union has brought to me. I believe that this can only be a sign of God's grace and kindness, which calls us to faith. We would be blind if we did not see. This is where faith belongs. May God give it to us daily. I do not mean a faith which flees the world, but faith which endures the world and even loves the world and remains true to the world in spite of all the suffering which it contains for us. Our marriage shall be a joyous yes to God's earth. It shall strengthen our courage to act and to accomplish something on the earth. There is hardly anything that can make one happier than to feel one counts for something with other people. What matters here is not numbers, but intensity. In the long run, human relationships are the most important thing in life. I sometimes wonder if God can forgive me for what I have done to Maria, Eberhardt, mother and father, students, parishioners, followers. And, and I cannot know, most of them, whether they are in prison as I am, or even whether they are alive or dead, and if I ask, it will immediately put them in danger. In all of human history, have there ever been people like us with so little ground under our feet? So utterly bereft of all hope, and yet for whom hope 
is so real that we would risk everything for it. I believe that God can and will bring good out of evil, even great evil. I believe that God strengthens us in our distress, but he does not strengthen us in advance, lest we should depend on ourselves and not on him alone. I believe God can use even our failings and shortcomings and turn them to good account. And I believe it is no more difficult for God to use our failings than to use our successes. But for this, he needs people who will make the best use of everything. <clears throat> Who can stand in such a time? It is the one who is willing to sacrifice ideals and duties, faith, and even conscience in obedience to the call of God. We are called to act in faith, in obedience to God. That is what we declared ten years ago at Barman. We have only one leader, the Habendor Ein Führer. We follow God as God has been revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Now, some people listened to that and they thought that is just theological prattle. That is what academics and pastors say when they are alone together. But the Nazis knew what it meant. Just as long ago the demons knew Jesus before the disciples did. A student asked me, would it not be better for us to leave this tiny confessing church and be part of the national church? where we could preach on Sunday mornings to hundreds of people. And I told him, one act of obedience is worth a thousand sermons. To be a Christian, to be a human being, to be authentic, is to follow the call of God. But this is not about personal salvation. This is not about the heroic struggle against impossible odds. That is not enough. We have a responsibility to history. Evil, evil can and must be overcome. It is not enough simply to die bravely. There remains for us only the very narrow way of living every day, every hour, every minute, as if it were our last 
and yet living as though we were looking for a bright and beautiful future. I'm learning right up to this present moment that to have faith, one must throw oneself into the world. One must live unreservedly in this life, even, even in this life. With all of its difficulties and perplexities and hardships, God does not need saints. God needs human beings. God needs human beings who faithfully follow. I believe that God answers sincere prayers and responsible actions. And we are called to share in the suffering of God in the world. To wait with Christ in Gethsemane. That is our task and it is our only task. To wait with Christ in Gethsemane. Palm Sunday and Gethsemane and Good Friday and Easter, they are now. They are not sometime long, long ago. They are now. And this is where God calls us to live. Please don't ever get anxious or worried about me. <coughs> but don't ever forget to pray for me. I am sure that you don't. I am so sure of God's guiding hand that I hope I will always be kept in that certainty. You must never doubt that I am traveling with gratitude and cheerfulness along the road where I am being led. My past life is brimful of God's goodness, and my sins are covered by the forgiving love of Christ crucified. I am most thankful for the people I have met, for my family, for my friends, for Eberhardt, and for you, my dearest Marie. It says in the old children's song that angels watch over us. And adults need that as much as children. And I feel them close. So do not think that I am unhappy. What is happiness and unhappiness? It depends so little on the circumstances. It depends on what happens inside a person. I am grateful. I am grateful every day that I have you. And that makes You are faithful and loving. <clears throat>